If you attended a software coding bootcamp but didn't get a developer job, then this is an opportunity for you. But you have to act fast and apply ASAP. Before you apply though, let me walk you through a couple of things you should know so you have a better shot of getting accepted into the program. Especially how to prep for the coding challenge and a sneak peek at the hackathon at the end of the application process. Before I get to it, subscribe for new breakdowns every week on how to succeed and get paid in tech. Okay, so JP Morgan Chase has a paid training opportunity called Emerging Talent Software Engineers. Their next paid training cohort session starts on April 24th, 2023. If you're interested, you need to apply now because the deadline is February 12th at 11.59 a.m. Side note, these apprenticeship programs typically open up for applications at least twice a year. So if you're watching or listening to this after February 12th, 2023, just bookmark their link and check again later on in the year. Okay, so what are you applying to? Well, according to their description, you can expect their training to further develop your software engineering skills. You have a dedicated team to support your success and career advancement for two years. You'll work on creating innovative solutions for customers, be responsible for the design, coding, and testing of software while collaborating with a diverse team of experts worldwide. You'll have access to training, mentorship, and senior leaders to develop new skills and relationships. Finally, you'll have the opportunity to contribute positively to society by working on projects that make a difference in the world. Speaking of projects, there's a hackathon challenge that's a major key to getting into the program too. I'll get back to that a little bit later, so stick around a bit. Okay, so here's their requirements and remote situation. So first of all, this is a hybrid opportunity. Uh, that means a couple of days a week in the office and the rest at home. But where's the office? Well, here are the locations. Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Houston, Jersey City in New Jersey, uh, Plano, Texas, Tampa, Florida, and Wilmington, Delaware. Side note, if you don't live near these locations or you want to apply to a paid remote only apprenticeship, check out my other video called $48 per hour in remote, how to get accepted into a tech apprenticeship. Okay, so back to this application. Now, when you apply, you can select up to three locations in preferential order. Obviously, you should either live real close or be prepared to move to one of the locations you selected. Now, moving on, these are the key skills and qualifications they're looking for. They're looking for a foundational knowledge of Java, Python and or C Sharp, a basic understanding of version control systems like Git, databases, data structures, unit testing, and algorithms. And they also want solid team players that can execute tasks quickly. Problem solving skills and leadership attributes are on their radar too. Basically, they're looking for a well-rounded person that they can mold into their ideal employee. So you gotta show them that you're that superstar. And that starts with your resume and cover letter. If you haven't already, add your previous bootcamp experience as an actual job in the work experience section. I know you didn't get paid like it was a job, but you worked just as hard, right? Plus, how else are you gonna get past this first stage of the application? Next, add some relevant bullet points. For example, demonstrated Java proficiency through the successful completion of various coding projects or utilize Git for version control and collaborated with team members on code reviews. The point is you have to show on paper the foundational knowledge they're looking for. Don't forget the people skills too. Add something like strong communication skills acquired through collaboration with peers and instructors or proven success in fast paced environments through group project completion and software engineering bootcamp. Don't forget to update your skills section with everything they're looking for. Okay, so now the cover letter. The cover letter is a little trickier, so you might want to use AI to get a good foundation. So go to ChatGPT and ask it to create a cover letter based on the job requirements, and that'll be the foundation. You'll have to tweak it so it's more in line with your work and bootcamp experience. But either way, the AI should cut down the time dramatically for this part. Now, when you upload your resume, just like every other job website, 
uh, your titles and resume bullet points will get scrambled around. So you have to click into the title fields and achievement sections for each job to make sure that it looks right. The application will give you an opportunity to include all the front end and back end technologies you're familiar with. So make sure you include that. Now, if your resume and cover letter does the job, you'll get an email inviting you to complete a coding challenge powered by Hacker Rank. You'll have 60 minutes to complete the challenge. So once you click the link in the email, the challenge will start. Before you do that, you might want to go to the Hacker Rank interview prep kit. That's a web page on their site of curated coding challenges. These challenges are based on the common concepts tested in coding interviews. Basically, you want to practice solving challenges that are based on things like string manipulation, linked list, and hash maps. If you look under each coding challenge category, they'll tell you the percentage of companies that test for that category. So basically, you want to use the Hacker Rank interview prep kit to get a good feel for some of the areas you may need to brush up on. Remember, your actual coding challenge will be using Hacker Rank to supply the questions. So you might as well study from the source, right? If you successfully complete your coding assessment, you'll receive an invitation to submit your virtual interview. This invitation will come from HireVue. So here's the deal with them. This virtual interview is in fact a one-sided interview. What I mean is you'll be speaking to the camera and answering the questions on screen. Your answers will be recorded for review. Now this can go down in a variety of ways, but you can expect something along the lines of recording yourself answering three to five questions. You'll get 30 to 60 seconds to prepare and up to two minutes to answer. You may or may not get a couple of retakes for every question. I remember I did a virtual interview for a job a couple of years ago. It was really weird. It's like leaving the perfect voicemail. I kept deleting it over and over until I got it right. Took me like an hour to answer three questions anyway these questions can be behavioral based in other words they're designed to gauge if you have professionally demonstrated the values they believe in jp morgan chase's values are exceptional client service operational excellence a commitment to integrity fairness and responsibility and a great team and winning culture so a question you might see that's targeting operational excellence is what's your proudest achievement or a question targeting integrity might be tell us the time your values were put into question if you need more examples reach out to me on the tech or die website contact form and i can give you several more also make sure you use the star method when answering questions the star method is a way to answer interview questions by sharing specific examples of your skills and experiences Here's how to use it. S is for situation. Set the scene and give the necessary details of your example. T is for task. Explain what you had to do or what your responsibility was in that situation. A is for action. Describe the specific actions you took to complete the task or handle the situation. R is for result. Share the outcome or results of your actions. Here's an example of how you might use the STAR method to answer the question. Can you give an example of a time when you had to solve a problem? Situation. I was working as a manager at a hotel and we were experiencing a high volume of customer complaints about the internet service. Task. My task was to improve the internet service and reduce the number of customer complaints. Action. I researched different internet service providers and negotiated with them to upgrade the hotel's internet service. I also trained the front desk staff on how to troubleshoot internet connection issues and created a system for tracking customer complaints. Result. As a result, customer complaints about internet service decreased by 30% and overall customer satisfaction improved. By following the STAR method, you can give a clear and specific example of a time when you worked in a team and highlight your skills and experiences. You also might get some questions that probe your desire and motivation to be at JP Morgan Chase. So prepare for those too. For example, what interests you about this position and our company? Or 
What are your long-term career goals and how do they align with our company's mission and values? They want to know if you did the research and determined that you are actually committed to a long-term relationship with them. They also want to know if you're enthusiastic to work for them and plan to hit the ground running. Now, if you're selected to proceed to the final stage of the process, you'll be invited to participate in the virtual Hack for Good interview. This is a hackathon where you'll have the opportunity to showcase your coding skills to solve a social challenge while being assessed and considered for an offer in the April 2023 cohort. If you noticed, I didn't mention using ChatGPT to help you with the coding assessment on Hacker Rank. It probably can help you get to the virtual interview phase, but what's the point? You will get exposed during the hackathon. During the hackathon, your team will be assigned at least one mentor. The mentor and your teammates will be highly interested in making sure everyone has the same amount of work while contributing equally. So that's why you gotta know how to pass the coding challenge without using ChatGPT. Just my two cents, you know? So back to the hackathon. Over the course of 12 hours, you and your team will work together to develop a solution for a good social cause. You and your team will work to build an app that can make a difference to the people who need it most. Key phrase, work together. Your collaboration and communication skills are just as important as your technical skills, so keep that in mind too. Now, you'll most likely be creating a solution to an issue that is impacting a nonprofit or NGO. I would expect at a minimum that you and your team will have to create a working app or prototype, share your code via GitHub, and demo the app to the nonprofit stakeholders. Now, that's as real world as it gets. And because of that, that's your final assessment for the apprenticeship. Now, like I mentioned before, if you're interested in a high paying tech apprenticeship, but don't live in the areas required for this JP Morgan apprenticeship, check out my other video called 48 per hour and remote, how to get accepted into a tech apprenticeship. In that video, I break down five things you can do for a better chance at getting accepted into a high paying tech apprenticeship. I also review one tech apprenticeship that's willing to pay up to 80,000 while you learn on the job. If you got value out of the video, subscribe to this channel and please share this video with someone who will benefit from it. I appreciate your time and see you in the next one. And remember, success, success is a choice. choice.